Welcome back to Radiography Simplified. It's me, Michael. This is the third video on the series of radiation biology. In this video, we discuss the types of radiation. Radiation is essentially energy in motion. With radiation, energy is either transmitted as electromagnetic waves or subatomic particles through a medium. And in this case, a medium could be vacuum, air, human tissue, or some other material. This medium is composed of something called atoms. Ionizing radiation is a type of radiation, or a type of energy in motion, that is powerful enough to eject or knock off electrons from the medium that it passes through. This process of ejecting electrons is called ionization and is important to the study of radiation biology. This is because when electrons are ejected from an atom, the atom which was once stable no longer has an equal number of protons and electrons. In this state, the atom is no longer an atom but is now an ion. An ion is more likely to participate in chemical reactions than atoms. The chemical reactions that the ion participates in are responsible for the biological damage that radiation causes. We'll hear more about this in coming sections. Ionizing radiation can be grouped into two types. The first is electromagnetic radiation. Remember that we defined radiation as energy in motion. Well, that is exactly the case in electromagnetic radiation. In electromagnetic radiation, only energy is in motion, and it is transmitted at the speed of light. In the case of particulate radiation, energy is still transmitted, but this time, mass is carried along with the energy. Let's talk a bit more about electromagnetic radiation. EM radiation possesses both wave-like and particle-like properties. As waves, they are transmitted with a speed, frequency, and wavelength. And even though they do not have a mass, as particles, they are transmitted in discrete amounts called quanta. Different sources of electromagnetic radiation are grouped on something called the electromagnetic spectrum. On the spectrum, we have radio waves, microwaves, infrared rays, visible light, ultraviolet rays, X-rays, and gamma rays. This is listed in order of increasing energy and frequency and decreasing wavelength. This means that microwaves have a higher energy and frequency but a lower wavelength than radio waves. Also, you'll notice I put X-rays and gamma rays in red. Here's why. Even though everything on the list constitutes electromagnetic radiation, only X-rays and gamma rays are ionizing radiation. Remember, at the beginning of this video, we defined as radiation with sufficient energy to ionize an atom. On the electromagnetic spectrum, only X-rays and gamma rays can ionize atoms and cause the biologic effects that occur from the ionization of atoms. Hence, in radiation biology, they are the two sources of electromagnetic radiation that we are most concerned about. Now we talk about particulate radiation. Unlike electromagnetic radiation, which carries only energy, particulate radiation is energy, mass, and sometimes charge in motion. Examples of particulate radiation include alpha particles, electrons, and beta particles, which are a type of electrons. Other types of particulate radiation are neutrons and protons. Now we explore some of these particles individually. First, we have alpha particles. Each alpha particle consists of two protons and two neutrons. Alpha particles come from naturally existing substances such as uranium rocks and radium ore bars. As these substances decay, they release alpha particles. I wouldn't collect any uranium rocks if I were you. A proton has a positive charge of one, while a neutron has zero charge. Since an alpha particle has two protons and two neutrons, its net charge will be plus two. Now we talk about the interactions of alpha particles. Remember from physics that opposite sides attract. What essentially happens in alpha particle interaction is that the positively charged alpha particles interact with the negatively charged electrons in a material, thus ionizing atoms along the path of the alpha particle. These are known as coulombic interactions because they are dependent on the charge of the particles. As a result of these interactions, the alpha particle loses a large amount of energy over a short distance, which limits the penetration depth of alpha particles to only a few centimeters in air or less than a millimeter in human skin. Next, we talk about electrons. Electrons are negatively charged and are produced by two means. First, they can be produced by the decay of radioactive nuclei. 
such as carbon-14 or strontium-90. Electrons produced through this method are called beta particles. The second method of electron production is through interactions of photons with matter. Regardless of how they are produced, they have similar characteristics. Electrons have a mass that is 8,000 times less than the mass of alpha particles. And they possess a negative charge of 1, except for positrons, which possess a positive charge of 1. Positrons are basically electrons with opposite charge. Like alpha particles, electrons ionize atoms along their path. However, electrons experience more scatter and are not as efficient at causing ionization due to their lower mass. Also, electrons travel a fair distance before losing all of its energy. Thus, they are said to have a greater penetration depth than alpha particles. Next up, neutrons. These do not have as much mass as alpha particles, but are 2,000 times heavier than electrons. They do not have a charge, because neutrons lack a charge. They cannot interact by columbic interactions like in alpha particles and electrons. Instead, they interact by colliding with other charged particles. These collisions lead to scatter and loss of energy. However, neutrons are relatively difficult to stop and possess a greater penetration depth than electrons, but not as great as X-rays. Now we have protons. These are not produced by radioactive decay and thus are encountered less frequently than others. They are produced by devices called particle accelerators. In a particle accelerator, atoms such as hydrogen are ionized and exposed to a high voltage. Protons have a positive charge of 1 and 2,000 times more mass than electrons. As for its interactions, it has more penetrating power than alpha particles. Also, because of its higher mass, it experiences less scatter than electrons. So far in the series, we've discussed the cell theory and the types of radiation. I hope it has been a good time so far. Remember to leave your questions and comments in the comments section. Next up, we discuss the interactions of radiation with matter. I'll see you in the next video.